Hello guys and welcome to the next installment in our Hungarian Storytime series. Today I would like to tell you a little story about my neighbors. Now I thought I'm just out of fun, I'm going to draw you a little picture of what our street looks like in regards to mods. So this here would be our street. I called it Dog Nut Lane because that's in reality what it is. Now you see my house here, like on the bottom, in the middle, where it says me. And yeah, so this is just a, a small part of our street. So opposite uh, of my house, you see the famous Labrador that I have already shown in a video what that thing is doing. Then let's go to the left of the opposite side. So there is left of the Labrador's house. There is a house with no dog. Then comes the Jack Russell Terrier that I featured in the last video or two, two videos before, I don't remember, with the old lady that uh, kicks or that kicked her dog in the ribs. Then the next one on the left is a bull terrier and we would continue then the next house with a golden retriever. Then to the right of the Labrador, imagine miracles still exist. There are two houses with no mods. But then the next house that is not on the picture anymore here that would be the famous house with the two German Shepherds. I featured them in one of the Meet the Neighbors videos. That's the one where the owner comes home, has this habit of coming home drunk. And then he's, you know, he's stumbling through the entire street and yelling at every house and agitating all the mods. But that didn't fit on the picture anymore. Now let's go to the bottom side. So we have me in the middle here. Then right next to me on the left hand side, there is a house with no mud, no dog there. And that actually is the best neighbor that I ever had. It's an older couple and they're extremely decent people, extremely, uh, just, ex just extremely nice, uh, very educated, very thoughtful people. And the funny thing is that he actually used to be the postman. He used to be the, the postal delivery guy for, I think, more than 40 years. So I think secretly he's also a dog hater, or at least he's an anti-dog person, because uh, you, can, you can probably imagine what the postal, you know, the, the post guys have to go through here. Every day they try to deliver the mail. Then the next hand, the next uh, house on, uh, you know, on the left hand side from my neighbors, there's a boxer, which is probably together with the Jack Russell Terrier, the most irritating thing in the entire street. Uh, that boxer is just, is just absolutely, just absolutely mental. Besides being absolutely disgusting, because like when you when you actually look at it, like underneath its head on the ground, there is always this puddle of saliva, because you just have the saliva flowing and dripping out of of their mouths all the time, and that thing is just absolutely hysterical. And if you know boxers, then you know what unbelievably obnoxious barking voice they have it's always this this kind of it's this 60 percent mix of barking and 40 percent of whimpering like it, it just sounds like an absolute idiot that animal and then we continue on going further left with another german shepherd now 
The ones that I would like to talk about today are actually the ones on my right hand side. So you see two houses there, German Shepherd. Now these two houses actually belong to the same couple. So they bought both the properties here. That's why I kind of put them right next to each other. So the German Shepherd is the same. It's just one German Shepherd, but on both properties. And there was one little story where I actually realized how dumb these people are, or at least uh, at least the woman uh, from that from that couple. Like what they do is they go on holidays once a year to Romania and they always go to the same place they told me they always go to the same hotel in, in somewhere in Romania because in Romania um, you have actually areas that are Hungarian speaking so uh, large parts of Romania were actually you know like more than 100 years ago before the first world war they were actually Hungarian areas and you know after the first world war those territories were taken away from hungary or from the austro-hungarian empire and they were given to the state of romania but you still have large territories in romania that are hungarian speaking and that's where they go to because they don't speak romanian and so they go on holidays in one of those hungarian speaking areas now, what do they do with their dog? Now, just to give you a little example on what people consider normal here, they just leave the dog here. Now, they are, I actually, just out of interest, I, uh, I talked uh, about that with them. Because last year, uh, right before they actually went on holidays, uh, they they came to me and they told me that they they will be going on holidays, but the German Shepherd will stay here, and that's how they handle the thing. So the that mutt is just outside all the time, and their daughter drops by once a day to you know to fill up the dog bowl and you know the water the water bowl. And that's about it, you know, the dog is just going to stay here because, you know, guard dog, yeah, it's supposed to be the guard dog or watchdog. And uh, yeah, so they leave it here to guard the house. And then when we talked about it, uh, you know, right before they went on holiday, so the woman came to me and uh, she said, yeah, you don't have to be alarmed, but uh, the dog is probably going to bark a little bit more now because we will be on holidays and then, you know, she barks a bit more. And I was already surprised to kind of hear that because like in my, you know, where I grew up, it, it would definitely not be normal to just uh, leave the dog there alone by itself for a week. I mean, anything could happen to it, but all right, it seems to be normal here. And then she asked me a question that I, that I just found absolutely puzzling. She asked me that, like, like actually just out of interest, when, when our dog barks, like, do you actually hear that through the fence? And I mean, I mean, I was, I was just, I was just absolutely, absolutely uh, puzzled by this question because, you know, we have a wire fence here between the houses. So, I mean, she, for the first few seconds, I really didn't know, didn't really know how to phrase my my answer, but I realized that she seriously thought that the sound waves would just somehow magically stop at their wire fence, and that the sound waves would actually not go through. So I I really oh no actually I hear I hear their German Shepherd yeah now. Yeah, ooh, somebody walked past the house. Oh my God, we all need to know that. So yeah, she apparently thought that the sound waves are somehow magically blocked by a wire fence. And I, I really, I really didn't know what to say. I mean, I just said, yeah, well, of course I, I hear it. I mean, yeah, what? Well, listen to this.
So this is what I hear in my bedroom, actually. So that's that's exactly this this stupid mod. So yeah, you just see how um, th that's actually the entire story. You know, it's uh, I mean, make you can make of it whatever you want, but you know, you see how you see how unbelievably uneducated and and stupid these people are. I mean, you really don't have to have a PhD in physics to understand that. Uh, a wire fence is not is not exactly going to stop sound and I just I just really don't know what's what's going on in their heads I mean you have to be you have to be unbelievably dim to ask such a question and I mean anyway you know the point the, on the other hand the point is also that why is she asking the question anyway I mean I said yes of course I hear it so it's just it's just as loud as as in your house. I mean, what do you expect? And then the question is totally pointless because even if I, I mean, I did say yes. I mean, what are they going to do about it? I mean, they're not going to do anything about it anyway. So the question is is just as pointless as uh, as talking about it at all. So yeah, they actually did then go on holidays for a week. And that thing, uh, that thing is just absolutely, uh, goes absolutely crazy when they are not at home. There is another, uh, there is another side to this because this old couple, they usually, you know, in the warmer season, they always go on a walk, you know, by themselves without the dog, usually like four or five times a week. Now, when they go on that walk and they leave the dog at home, like the dog goes absolutely crazy and it's it's becoming absolutely hysterical and starts uh, whimpering and and barking like like crazy so half the street actually knows when they are on their walk these two so you can imagine how it was when they actually went on holidays and left the dog here so for one week like half the street had to listen to this nonsense and Regarding this guard dog topic, now imagine you are a burglar and you actually find this out. Then you're just going to you're just going to use the dog as an indicator when they are at home and when they are not. So it would be it would be absolutely absolutely advantageous to a burglar that they would just have to to look at the dog, when is it going crazy? And then you will actually know, oh, okay, now they're on holiday, so I just have to poison that thing. And then I, I have one week time to just empty out their house. But yeah, so much, so much about the guard dog uh, thing. So they went on holidays and it was just absolute hell for one week. And you knew exactly when they came back because suddenly the dog, um, like the barking and the whimpering went down 80% and you knew, oh, okay, they're back again. So they let half the street know that they are gone, which, I mean, you might as well just post it on Facebook that you're on holidays and you can invite uh, everybody to break into your house. But hey, it's good that the dog does it for them. All right, so that's the next little story in in the Hungarian story time. I hope you're having a good day. Stay away from dogs as usual, you know, they're all assholes. You take care now and goodbye. <laughs>